come on guys look at this man right here in front of us with all the great backdrop i i told you before man it was like i need an upgrade on this but hey like don't get offended it's a flag beautiful setup like i'm super excited to have you on today you know quick bio for the people who are not familiar with this man's face you should right now uh because like if you're on linkedin i'm um, probably you have uh him as a friend as a connection case he, he mentioned that he have twenty five thousand followers man that's crazy <laughs> crazy number uh so first of all eight years in telecom sales sold over 10 million that's 10 big ones 10 million in total contract value at the biggest companies at&t and comcast business so he's yes, basically sir. he's basically as we spoke before a little bit and you will see that in the interview now he's started not long ago well actually six months um his real estate business his company is called ring a bell realty i love that asher j bell so that's a cool name so he currently has six deals closed and 10 plus in the pipeline so actively doing the work and he started a record label, which maybe we can talk about that as well. That's a great name, Ring a Bell Records. So father and husband, <laughs> family of three, big family, great Christian man of faith. I love that, man. That's, that's great. I love the bio. So again, in front of us, guys, as I told you, Asher J. Bell. Thank you very much for joining me here on a podcast. I'm sure we're going to have a great time here today. So thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, man. I appreciate, you know, the time and, 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 you know, and the effort. So can you just tell people, first of all, maybe just a little bit of your background, like how did you like born and raised and, you know, how did you ended up being in sales and then decided to transition into real estate business? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and first and foremost, I just want to thank you for having me and giving me a chance to tell my story. Oh, and uh, I'll try to give you the condensed version. Cool. So um, basically, I was born and raised in Hayward, California, which is a small city just outside of Oakland, California, in the San Francisco Bay Area. We moved out to an area called the Central Valley, which is the San Joaquin County, which is just outside of Alameda County, which is the San Francisco Bay Area, in about 2001. So I graduated high school in 2006. And after high school, I didn't really have a plan per se. Um, I didn't have a really high GPA. I didn't have, uh, you know, the, I wasn't headed towards being a doctor or a dentist or a fireman. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. But I was a hard worker and I'm an athlete. I ran track and played football. So I always like to be active in whatever I did, extremely active. That's just kind of my nature and my character um, from a young man into a mature adult. So fast forward from 2006 to about 2010, 2011, I worked in warehouse jobs, jobs that required me to be physical and to be active, which is what I love to do. But it came to a point where I said, I don't know if I like lifting boxes and unloading trucks, which is what I did. I loved. I unloaded 40 to 60 foot trailers in a warehouse. And I did it for you know, between four and five years. And I just said, you know what? There has to be something better. Even uh, my director of operations at the time, the company is called Medline Industries. Uh, which is a large medical products distributor mm -hmm. um, in the U.S., and I believe they're global now. He, he, he sat me down one day in his office, and he goes, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I said, uh, I don't know. I said, I'm here. <laughs> he said, you don't, you don't belong here. You know, and this is coming uh, from the director of operations who ran the facility. Um, and at that point, it started to turn in my mind. I said, is there something better? Now, transitioning from a warehouse into sales, how did this happen? So I had a good friend from high school, matter of fact, all the way back to middle school, named Richard Cardenas. Uh, shout out to Richard Cardenas. Um, he had got into cell phone sales, which is telecom, telecom sales, um, working in the mall, working at T-Mobile. So he was selling cell phones in the mall since he got out of high school, graduated the same year in 2006. And um, he had been doing pretty well for himself. 
you know, as a 21, 22 year old guy, you know, making four, five, sometimes $6,000 a month, and sometimes even exceeding that. And to me at that time, that was a lot of money. And I was in a warehouse, I was getting, you know, uh, maybe eleven seventy-five an hour, less than $12. And I was working my butt off. And I said, you know what? I, I, I got to try something else. And he had been telling me, hey, why don't you come and sell cell phones with me? And I just said, I, I can't see myself doing that. You know, I'm an active guy. That's what I'm good at. But he saw something in me. He saw something in me that he saw in himself, which was just the personality and um, being personable in general. So he had been uh, kind of pulling on my, my coattail for about two years of come and, come and try this with me, come and, come and sell phones with me. And I said, you know what? You still, you still sell the phones? He said, of course, man. You should come do it. The business is really good right now. So me, I like to play things safe. I'm not much of a gambler. So what I did was I kept my job, which I worked a graveyard shift, which was from 11 to 7.30 in the morning. I would actually finish my work around 5.30. Um, everything I do, I just strive to be the best. I just have, you know, I, I didn't grow up with much. You know, I had a mom and a dad. Fortunately, I have five other brothers. There's six total. So we were always spread very thin when it came to money. We always had to work very hard for whatever it is that we received in our lives. And that's what we were taught. We were taught to work extremely hard, um, but didn't grow up privileged, didn't grow up with a silver spoon background. But I was one of the top people in that warehouse. Um, I had set all the records for, you know, we had a, a record for the most pallet stage. Um, you know, a, a, any record in that warehouse, I basically broke it or set it. So I was able to finish my work in six hours instead of eight, which would allow me to go home two hours early every day, and I could do this consistently. So what I would do is I would go to work from 11 to about 5.30, get off of work, go home, power nap for maybe three or four hours, and then get back up and be at work, have to be at work around 11.30 again, p.m., or excuse me, uh, a.m., a.m., and I would go to the mall. And at this time, I had joined AT&T. This was back in 2012. I had joined a kiosk, which was where my buddy Richard was the manager. So he gave me a job. So I kept two jobs for about, I think it was about two, two to three months was the time frame that I was working both jobs. So I was working at night, and I wasn't comfortable just leaving the job and starting something completely new. So I did both. And I went in there tired, um, fatigued, not much sleep, but I had to learn. I had to go to these sales courses, um, how to sell, how to hold conversations, learning all the products um, and the services that they offered there in the kiosk, which was really tough. But within 90 days, um, I became one of the top salespeople um, in the kiosk. And within six months, I moved from the kiosk into a store. And within a year, I became the assistant manager in that store. Um, sales was something that came natu naturally to me because I enjoy interacting with people and I enjoy the engagement and I love to communicate. This is something that, you know, it's a skill set that I've acquired and developed over the years. And it happened by way of talking to people every single day. So that's how I transitioned. At about the 90 day mark, I ended up getting let go from the other job because I started to decrease my performance in the warehouse and increase my performance um, at AT&T. So eventually they just say, you know what, after you've been here for, you know, close to five years, but I think it's time that, you know, if you're, they knew I had another job, I had a really good relationship there, you know, they, they, they say, you just might as well go ahead and just work at your other job. And, you know, you know, we departed on good terms, even though my performance went down, I had done a lot in the warehouse, so we departed in. Then I jumped all the way into sales. So from 2012 until today, I've been selling. I've been doing first and foremost in-person sales starting in a mall, and I did that for another two years. And then it's a funny story. I, I ended up switching companies. So I became known as the mall king. I, everybody in the mall knew me. Um, 
you know, like I said, I went there and I did the same thing I did in the warehouse. I was breaking records. I was doing really good in sales. So people, I, I built a reputation for myself. So the, there was a Verizon store in the mall. The manager heard about me and um, they came and they actually made me an offer. They said, hey, if you would come over to Verizon, we'll give you your own store and you'll be the actual store manager. But it's going to be in Fremont, which was about an hour away. Um, so it was going to be a commute, but I said, it's an opportunity for growth. I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to jump and I'm going to do it. So I left and I went to Verizon and I got my own store. And I was traveling from a small city called Manteca, California, all the way to Fremont, California, which is in the Bay Area. And the, and the commute was terrible. It, it, was, it was an hour drive with no traffic, but with traffic, it could have easily been an hour and 45 to two hours. So I did that for about a week and miraculously by way of relationships and communicating and engaging with people, I met a realtor back in 2012 and um, ended up selling him a phone and, you know, uh, you know, getting him on a better plan, helped him out. And as we were talking, we kind of got to small talk and I said, yeah, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be here because I can't handle this commute. I wish I could find a room or a place to rent out here. He said, you need to find a room? I'll help you find a room. I'm a real estate agent. And I go, really? He comes back the next day, found your room. And I'm like, no way. This, this can't be happening. It's all kind of falling in line. So with that being said, I went and interviewed with the lady who was actually renting the room out. And um, we connected. And I ended up getting into that room within a couple of, over that weekend, I had moved it myself from Manteca where I was at, at one of my parents' homes that they own here in Manteca. And then I nestled into the new place in Fremont. So fast forward, I'm at, I'm at the Fremont store, new store. And this is my first time actually running the store by myself. I have a team of eight people and all different walks of life, all different personalities, I've managed before, but never been the sole manager. Um, so while this was happening, I'm still adjusting, you know, to kind of having to run everything. There was another manager in there when I got there, but he ended up leaving the company. So I ended up having to run the store by myself. So within the first three months, I had to connect with everybody in that store. I had to understand their personalities. I had to figure out what their work ethic was. I had to find out what their weaknesses were and I had to find out what their strengths were. And then I had to develop them because the store was the lowest producing store in our region. I think of about five or six stores. Within two months, we became the top store in the region. Back to back, we did it three times in a row. So by my fourth month, they're singing our praises. Everybody in the store is going from literally not doing much. There was one, one girl who was doing really well um, she continued to do well, and she actually did a lot better, but the entire store began to produce. Um, and, and I just built a, a good, good, good relationship with not, every, not only everybody in the store, but a lot of the customers that were coming into the store. They kept coming back and referring more people into the store. So funny, funny story enough, every job I've gotten, I've literally been poached or recruited into um, by way of a relationship or somebody that I've met. So a customer from the store, which was um, a lady, she brings her husband in after she purchased phones from me and I solved the problem for her. She had some billing issues and whatnot. She brings her husband at the end of my shift. She had came in earlier and I'm kind of wondering what's going on. And I'm like, hey, is there an issue? And she goes, no, I just wanted my husband to meet you. Long story short, her husband works at a um school called DeVry University. I'm sure you guys have heard of DeVry University, but he's an executive there and he was looking for somebody to come on and um, work for him. So basically he waited till everybody left and he saw that I had a couple of awards on the wall for being the top manager in the region, having the top store. And he goes, and my wife said great things about you and I, um, you know, I want to make you an offer. He asked me what I was making, where I was at. And I said, I'm not really comfortable sharing that with you. He said, well, I'll make you an offer. So he made me an offer, which was about $20,000 $20, more than what I was going to be making where I was at. So it was a no-brainer for me. Um, left in good graces, let my director know that I was going to be moving on. And I went to work for a college. Now, the funniest part about this 
is I don't have a degree. And I got a job at a college. That's, that's what I wanted it to really ask you. It doesn't really sound like that's my job, <laughs> right? It's like, how do, you, how do you get a job at a college and you don't have a degree? Well, basically what my job was, was I was an educational liaison. So he brought me in and he, they basically taught me etiquette. It was a blessing to be hired at DeVry, um, not having much of a education after high school because when I got there, I didn't know the difference between an, a graduate degree and an undergraduate degree. I said, what, what's the difference? You know, don't you just get a degree when you go to college? So they ended up teaching me all this and teaching me all their programs. Um, and one of the best things about it was they taught me business etiquette. They also taught me how to cold call. And they also taught me outdoor prospecting because I managed accounts. Um, so I was a local account manager as well. So I would go speak at high schools. I would go speak at community colleges. And they taught me from a corporate level where we were measured and held to a standard and taught me how to do presentations and taught me how to do public speaking. So they basically sharpened me up and gave me a lot of skill sets that I didn't have going into the ride. Mm -hmm. I had great communication skills and relationship skills. But as far as the business skills, that's where I learned the business skills was at the Ryan University, where I was there for about two years. So they, they taught me some, some great fundamentals, which definitely helped me excel in, in the career that I'm in to this day, which is sales and just business in general. So after the two years at DeVry University, did a presentation at Comcast Business. And funny enough, I meet a guy, make a great relationship with him. And in my presentation, out of 30 something people, I had 16 people sign up um, because I, you know, I, I gave a good presentation. They were all interested. So I just, I kind of blew it away on the presentation. So I ended up getting laid off from DeVry. DeVry, as you know, was having some issues and they did some nationwide layoffs and I was a part of that layoff. So funny, funny enough, I reached back out to the guy I did the presentation for in San Francisco and I said, hey, I was wondering if you guys had any opportunities available. Well, he said, of course I do. And plug me in with the manager. Three weeks later, I'm now working at Comcast Business. So I spent the next four years at Comcast Business. And this was kind of all a setup. First, I learned the, scale, the basic sales skills and fundamentals of sales and communication from AT&T in the kiosk and in the store, moving on to Verizon and excelling in the sales portion of business. Then I go to DeVry University, which is where I learned business etiquette. And also, I learned more about outside sales and door-to-door -door and business-to-business, -business, specifically business-to-business -business prospecting, and also um, formal presentations and corporate presentations. So all of these skill sets that I've acquired over these last about four years, I took them into Comcast business, which was, like I said, it was a setup. Because as soon as I got there, I had already an advantage over other people that didn't come in with the skill sets that I had acquired over the past few years. Long, long story short, Comcast business, I do a great job there, Excel. Um, as you can see, I've got awards Whoa. all on my wall, Whoa. covering my whole wall. Just, um, you know, I've got over 22 different sales awards just between Comcast Business and where I'm at now, AT&T. Beautiful. Um, so I did well there. And here I am today at AT&T, been here two years doing the same thing. Um, was it within the top 10% of the company in the West Coast division um, in 2019 and started my real estate journey last year. Even on a part-time basis, I was able to get a deal closed um, for each month. I was in real estate, so off to an excellent start. And I'm going to blow it up and continue to do what I do wherever I go, and that's dominate. My God, man, I don't know where we follow up with that. I mean, where do we start? Well, like, first of all, like for <laughs> watching, they're like, they, you know, they, they heard the story, you know, you never graduate, like you never finished the college. You show the awards, which is like 20 plus the entire world. And it's just crazy. Like, I truly understand that because I came through a similar path. Again, I don't have the awards to show off, you know, because we, we changed many places. And I like, I don't think I even had these. But like, you know, like selling is something that definitely should be taught anywhere, school, college. 
but most of the time, like it, it, nothing is there. So that's what you did. You, you just learn all these skills by changing like all the jobs and it's stacked up in the end where you have all these awards and all the skill set. And now you're starting the real estate business. So I'm just curious, you know, like, where is it going to take? Are you planning to continue like to work for A&T, you know, AT&T, or are you going to, you know, to get more skill set and you're going to transition to another company? Or are you going to transition, you know, uh, into real estate full time? Like, what, what is it? What is the plan with that? So um, great question. And ultimately, what I want to do is I want to transition fully into real estate um, and, and get into investing in real estate, such as multifamily and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I'm going to continue to do uh, put forth my best effort at at t while I'm still employed here with the company mm -hmm. alongside of building my business on the side. But I definitely want to transition to real estate full time, but not just as a real estate agent, but also a real estate investor, um, not just from a wholesaling perspective, but also um, actually investing in real estate as far as multifamily goes. Got it. So, so that will be the, the, the end goal. Well, at least for now. Yes. Yes. That's and it. just build a portfolio and diversify. And, um, and so, also I left out one, um, one thing that I think would be interesting to our listeners is um, I also do coaching. And when I start, I started uh, my first company, Ring of Bell Enterprises, in 2017. Now, I haven't started actually chart doing paid coaching, but I've helped a lot of people out along the way. Everything that I've learned, um, like I said, I came in as a manager. It's just a natural knack that I have to teach, to share, um, and to build others and, and develop others. So I've been actually coaching more so on a free basis, building my brand over the last three years. And right now... Um, don't want to give you too much information, but I'm work, I'm creating a course right now on communication. Um, so that will be I'm, kind of a sales going field? to be releasing later on. Sales based, sales based course, or more kind of a how to talk with this people. This is a or... general communication. General Got communication. Got it. So that that that's that's valuable because in this is this in this day and age, we as people rely too much on this rather than doing this <laughs> right face, face because i mean this is this is not gonna go away it's gonna make the business transactions like to to like it's gonna become easier and easier to do the business but this will never go away like and and you need the skills right. like communications is definitely should be the number one top priority for everybody because we live in in, in this world i mean there's six point like whatever the billion people and like if you're want to be successful in anything whatever that that might be sales or that might be as a real estate agent or real estate investor it's going to involve you talking with some other people that you don't know so right if you're good at it if you know how to pierce people how to tell the story which this is exactly what you do you're you're by the way you're a great storyteller as well so you know you will be always successful you always have you know food on the table and and more than that so I definitely agree with you. So what do you think, what, like what market you're currently in and what market are you planning to start investing into multifamily? What, what these would be? So at, at this time, I'm more so focused on becoming a successful real estate agent. And, and where I'm at right now, I'm in between the Bay Area and what we call the Central Valley, which are about an hour apart. So I live in the Central Valley, but I grew up in the Bay Area, so I have a lot of connections in the Bay Area and a lot of connections here in the Central Valley. So I'm kind of a hybrid. I'm doing business in both the Bay Area and the Central Valley. So once I get to a point in my career where I have the money to invest like, like I would like to into multifamily, that will be another transition along the line of transitions that I will go throughout my career. So right now, my number one focus and my main priority is to become a successful real estate agent and become independent full time. And then when I get to a point in my career where I can seriously start to look into larger multifamily purchases um, and building an actual sustainable real estate portfolio, this is just going to be another step in the ladder that I'm climbing. Got it. So what, what, what is the current time frame that you have set it for this target? Do you have it? So, for absolutely. So I have a three, five, and 10-year plan. In the next three years, 
I want to be fully independent in real estate. In the next five years, I want to have at least, at least 12 doors. Um, and accumulatively speaking, so it could be some three units, some duplexes, and some four units. So I'm going to start between one to four units, as I'm sure you know, that's still in the residential bracket, which is uh, taxed differently. Um, and once I get to that five-year goal and having at least um, 12 doors, then I will start to at, look into owning larger multifamily, which is the you know, six, eight, 10, 12 unit properties and, and start to look into other areas to invest possibly out of state. And those and that's and the 10 year goal. That's the 10 year goal is to be at 20 doors or more. So those multifamilies would be you, you're gonna own them. You you're not gonna syndicate those deals. No, I, I definitely wanna build I wanna I wanna grassroot build a portfolio. Yeah, per, um, it's, it's a great way to Mm -hmm. personal portfolio that you're going to own yourself. It's not going to be a syndicated deal where you're going to go and raise money for, from people, right? No, I'm going to, my goal is to start small and, and build it brick by brick and acquire properties um, just by leveraging kind of the, well, I'm not going to refinance out, but similar to a bird strategy where I'll get in rehab, fix up the property, yep. build the equity, leverage the equity and, and then on and so forth. Got it. Got it. Yeah. So, so, so we will be acquiring yourself just using the, the banks and, and the financing from there. So, th so that's awesome. That's definitely advice. So what will be like, cause I, ju I just want to find out kind of the why again, coming back from the sales and sales is real estate. Like it's close, but again, it's, it's different. So can you just explain people what, why you, did you decided to transition into real estate? First of all, become again, realtor, and then transition into investing into like, why? Cause you are very successful at sales. So why, why, why should mm -hmm. not just stick with that? Well, one thing that happened that I kind of left out was, well, first of all, I'm 31 years old and I bought my first house um, just at the tail end of me being 29, uh, which was in August of 2018. And when I bought my house, um, I was working with a real estate agent and just the entire process, I was, I mean, it was my first home. I mean, I was ecstatic. I was, I was so happy, um, you know, and I was sharing all these different emotions, myself and my wife at the time, we were newly married and um, it was just a great experience. I was like, wow, I was talking to the agent. I was like, man, this is a pretty, this is a pretty good job. You get to, you get to communicate with people, which is a skill set that, is natural to me. You get to engage with people and you get to solve problems when they arrive. You just get to share this wonderful experience with people. And I said, hmm, I've been doing sales for a long time and sales feels good, but this feels really good. I could see myself doing this. And, uh, you know, as I began to talk to him, he, he kind of, you know, pointed me in the right direction on becoming a real estate agent. I said, you know what? I'm going to pursue this. So the experience that I had buying my first property, which is my first home, uh, where I'm at now, um, that was a trend. That was like the, the, uh, the it factor for me. I was just like, wow, this is, I could definitely see myself doing this. And not only is it going to enhance the skill sets that I have, it's also a great way to make a living. So got into the business. I mean, I, once I find something, I dive into it. Um, and, and I don't waste any time. I literally went in and within the next six months, um, I had passed my test. It took me a little bit longer um, to get my license, the processing portion. But within the next six months from buying my home, um, I already was I already had passed my state exam. So um, got licensed in June of last year. Um, there was a couple of mishaps in my application, which extended the process. It was a pretty long process, but here I am today. I'm now in real estate, um, and from the experience that I've had selling homes, it's exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's not as easy as I thought it was going to be, but it's well worth it. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Like everything new is, is going to be like, even though you think it's sales is going to be similar, it, it will take some time to learn, you know. So, I mean, once it's done, once you pass the learning, you know, the basics, 
you're going to be good. Because I was a real estate agent before, probably around 10 years ago. Again, I'm, I'm close mm -hmm. to your age. I'm, I'm 30 as well. So, you know, I, I mean, I didn't learn anything about real estate by being an agent. Just, you know, how to talk with people, the like transactions. It's not even that. I mean, it was fairly easy. It was just picking up the phone, calling random people from newspaper that we used to go and get, you know, first ones, you know, from a, from a basically the, the, the shop where they used to sell this and we used to bang the phones and, and just knock on doors and just do the ads and whatever mm -hmm. that was 10 years ago. So, you, you know, but how, how are you learning currently? Cause again, maybe there is, you know, audience maybe in similar positions as you are. I know there's a lot of real estate agents out there. So, and you're mm -hmm. talking about going and, you know, buying multifamily properties, which is it's come now it's going to be completely different because now you're, you're working for yourself and kind of a, you know, you have to, make the transactions going. That's how you make the money. And then it's going to be kind of a, you buy the deal, you put a lot of money and then you get a passive income. This is like, now it's going to become this different type of business. So can you just tell people which ways are you educating yourself and kind of preparing for that transition? Yeah, absolutely. So I am a, I want to say I am a, a student on YouTube. I go to YouTube university. <laughs> I mean, there's literally yes. nothing that you there's I don't think you can't there's nothing you can't figure out by way of YouTube. So uh, I, I mean, I, I'm sure you I'm sure we live you know we all live in this YouTube age, but I spend a lot of time on YouTube, and what I do is I follow a lot of the top agents. Um, I like I really like Aaron Kerman, um, Josh Altman, and Ricky Caruth. Um, these are probably my top three favorite agents that I follow um, because I also want to, you know, be, brand myself as a luxury real estate agent, which I'm sure everyone does, but it does take a cer certain personality and you have to be, um, you have to deal with a certain um, net worth of clientele in order to get into the luxury real estate market, which I find myself dabbling into and, and slowly migrating into. So I follow Aaron Kerman. Um, he's a Beverly Hills real estate agent. Um, he's done over 6 billion in sales. So I follow his YouTube. Um, he does have a show on CNBC, Listing Impossible. Um, I follow all of his social media platforms and I study him. I study his page. I, I listen to the way he talks. I listen to the way he, he his body movement because as you know, um, when it comes to, to communicating, I have it written here on my board. It's 55% body language, 38% tonality, and it's only 7% words. So I study him. I study the way he moves everything because I want to emulate that. Um, and, he, and he sells really, really um, high, high price homes. Uh, I mean, north of 30, 40 million. Same with Josh Altman. He's another um, Hollywood, LA real estate agent, Beverly Hills real estate agent. And Ricky Caruth is actually, I believe he's out, don't quote me on this, I want to say Alabama. Um, but he has a free real estate um, program called Zero to Diamond. And I came across him because I started to follow all these different realtors on, on Instagram. So I, because I, I got in the business, I said, what do realtors do? So I started following all of them. And I started to look at their pages and analyze what they post and the words that they use. And anytime I didn't no, no, a term. Also, I was getting some education through through the real estate brokers that I joined. Initially, it was Keller Williams, um, and after about two months there, I made a transition to Realty One Group. So you also get the education from the brokerage that you're at. And I want to say to any new real estate agent, um, do do your diligence when you're choosing your brokerage. Um, and things that you should look for when you're looking into a brokerage is first and foremost their commission structure. Uh, we're in, we are in this business to help people and, and serve our clients, but we also are here to make money. So make sure that the commission structure is favorable for you and it makes sense. And also make sure the culture is good because culture mm -hmm. um, is extremely important and, and I wouldn't put that above. I would say it's at the same, same line as education, right? Make sure they have great education for you. Um, so I get the education through my brokers, but I also do a lot of independent study. Um, I'm always on YouTube, just basically watching realtors show homes. And then also in the Zero to Diamond program, 
you know, you, you get more than just what you see on TV. It actually breaks down conversations, how to make phone calls, which are all things that I'm very comfortable doing. I'm just changing the language a little bit. But get on YouTube, find three agents that you admire or that you, can, you, you, you want to emulate. You want to emulate their success and study them, study people. And you will then find yourself, you know, doing the same things that they're doing um, if you're consistent and you practice and you stay focused on what you want by the law of attraction, what, what you seek out will eventually come back to you. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, couldn't agree more. That's definitely, I mean, that's the, that's the recipe for, for success over here, you know, that, uh, you know, you're giving people. So that, that is awesome. Like, what about the multifamily space that you got so attracted because you, you're saying, because I mean, there's a lot of different asset classes, construction, you can do hotels, you can do Airbnb, you can do, you know, mm -hmm. something else. But why multifamily in particular? So I actually got into Audible books, I want to say back in 2018, because, you know, I'm, I'm a very transparent person. I, I never really enjoyed reading. It just wasn't something that I like to do. I'm more of an active type person. I like to be out. I like to talk to people. I'm a visual learner. I like to watch videos. I learn better that way. Um, but when I came across Audible, I was able to do things while listening to books. And I started listening to a couple of different authors. And one that I really, really like, of course, we most of us know him, Uncle G, Grant Cardone, right? You know, I read, I read 10X. I read about three or listened to it about three times, Seller Be Sold, yeah. um, you know, and, and his books really got me motivated. And as I began to study Grant Cardone, um, he's an investor. He's a real estate investor. And he has a very large, I think he's at like a couple, maybe two or three billion, maybe four billion now, um, as far as a real estate portfolio goes, but specifically in multifamily. And what he says in his books, was he bought his first house, I believe, in his early 20s. And he tells the story that he bought his first house and it was winter. He had a renter in there and the renter left. And he had, he had to cover the mortgage. And he got in a jam. Luckily, he was able to, to sell the house off before he lost the house, before it went into foreclosure because it did go into default. And he told himself that he would never do that again. And um, through the process, he, the next purchase was a multifamily. I think it was like a four unit or something like that. But he had a, a, a higher probability of vacancy because he had multiple doors. So it's kind of basic math, right? More doors, um, the higher probability that you can have those doors or, or have a tenant, you know, in those rooms. And even if you have four, if you can get at least two tenants in there that can get close to covering the mortgage, if not cover it. Um, maybe three, but you'll still get the passive income from the third door. So this concept made sense to me. It's pretty cut and dry. Yeah. Wow, that makes sense. If I just buy a bunch of single family homes, what happens when I lose the renter or I lose the tenant? Well, then I'm covering the mortgage. I'd rather take my chances on more doors to where I wouldn't have to have um, that cloud over my head. If one tenant's not there, what am I going to do? So mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons why I'm looking into multifamily because I do follow Grant Cardone avidly, um, and he always goes over the benefits of multifamily investing, um, the appreciation rates on multifamily. Um, they, they're, you know, you just get a better return on your investment in multifamily as yeah. far as passive income goes. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a cool guy. I mean, the, the you know, probably some of you who are watching are familiar with his name, Grant Cardone. You know, you, you just Google the man and you're going to find some great, great stuff when it comes back to the sales. Same as Asher is doing like sales, real estate, you know, investing, passive, active. Like he, he's a great, you know, really great dude for, for, for people to follow. Again, there is, you know, a lot of advice, like because again, like because I study like Uncle G, you know, for a long time. I mean, I have a book. Pro I have a book somewhere. It's somewhere in this in this house. It's about this thick and it's full of, of the notes. So I'm basically, I'm watching the show and taking notes, like imagine, and how many shows does he have? Probably, I don't know, close to maybe hundred. So there's hundred shows in my book and everything is written by hand, just studied and you know, my notes. And, Cause I was crazy, man. I was crazy. Like I wanted to learn, but then I found out again, the other sources because there is, you know, books and um, 
not even like seminars because again in the place that i live there was no multi-family events again you live in a you, you are in a position where you can go to these type of events and learn more and meet yeah. all those people that are active in the business but mm -hmm. i mean there's mm -hmm. there's so much information like now so you you know you can just follow these people get the books get the audios and then just pour yourself in with a you know just dive in and all this information so it's, de it's definitely great so Okay, so what else, what else we can cover here? I, again, I would love to talk real estate more because, again, you do the real estate business currently being an agent and looking to, you know, get involved with the multifamily. So, mm -hmm. again, the why behind the entire thing? Because, again, real estate investing, you, you, you're not, just to clear this out, you're not going to do a multifamily investor just for Instagram bio, right? You're not. <laughs> no. You're not no. putting there. I'm an entrepreneur and I'm a real estate investor. Man, it's it's stupid, you know. So, but what's the what's the reason behind you know investing in real estate? Because I mean, you can buy businesses again, invest in other asset classes. You can do super. You mm -hmm. can open probably your own like sales, um, you know, sales company just like grants or something. Like why why real estate? You know, like and and why like mm -hmm. why that in particular? Um, that's a great question. So one of the reasons why I chose real estate was, first of all, after studying and due diligence, um, one thing that is a known fact in real estate is 90% of all millionaires have created their, their fortune and wealth and built it through real estate. Um, real estate is sustainable. Long-term real estate is sustainable. Um, as, as far as land is as well, because they're not making any more land. Um, so it's something that if you do invest in real estate today, you know, markets do fluctuate. They do go up and they do go down and sometimes they're stagnant. But no matter what, someone's always going to need a place to live. And also, I've been reading some studies statistic-wise. Moving forward, they're saying that as far as the millennials and Generation X, which is the next gen or the the, the 90s babies or the late 2000s babies, um, a lot of them prefer to rent apartments, especially in areas like California where I am. It's extremely expensive to buy a home. San Francisco, one of the most Everybody's expensive places. Everybody's moving away, man. Everybody's, when are you going to move? Um, well, honestly, <laughs> I, I see myself in SoCal and LA. Um, that's, that's an end goal. That's probably when I get to that 10-year goal. I'm going to relocate somewhere down. I, I really want to be in, in in, you know, uh, Costa Mesa, Irvine, Beverly Hills, LA, like I want to be on the scene, you yeah. know, because that's the type of clientele that I want to attract. Yeah. So um, if they did it, I can do it. You know, if you can dream it, you can achieve it. You know, it's all about the will. How bad do you want to do it? And can you actually follow through with it? So that's where I do want to end up. But to answer your question, real estate is very sustainable. And, and not, I won't just say in real estate. I mean, once you become an investor, you're right. You, you, you all, you know, the key word is diversify, diversification. So I'll go into commodities. I'll, I'll go into stocks, which I'm dabbling in now on a very small minuscule level, um, you know, as a beginner, you know, being transparent, but learning the basics and learning the ropes. But real estate is something that I know that no matter what, um, it will be sustainable throughout the course of my life. And it's something that I can pass down to my kids, 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 yeah. um, and it, it's, a, it's a great way to, to build wealth and passive income. So when my portfolio exceeds a certain amount, I really, literally, if I never wanted to work again, would never have to work again. Um, when you hire property managers and, yeah. and, and you know, have people managing your funds and portfolio for you. I don't think that you will never have to work again. I mean, you still will have to wake up with the you know, pajama, pajamas on and, and go to the mailbox to collect your money. <laughs> it still work man it still work i mean you, you know like no what i'm saying because you will be bored i think you know everybody needs a purpose so everybody kind of look at it because i know there's like some of my audience is very young and they look at it you know 16 i know you hustling doing the thing you know like entrepreneurship and all that so it's good but you know like because there's a lot of different people telling different stories like some of those people you know like like Grant is, is uh, hammering this guy who's, who wrote the book, like four hour work week, you know? And, and I mean, it's a good book, but you, you know, like you need purpose in life. You need purpose because mm -hmm. when you get bored, you know, when you get bored and when you travel the beaches, you're just like, man, I don't want to do this anymore. 
I don't think that, you know, that I know people that will love to do that. Well, if I know I need to get rid of them. So, you know, I do, I do want to clarify something if you will. So when I, when I say that I'll never really have to work again, meaning yeah. it'll allow me to be free to do other things. Yeah. Let me rephrase that yeah. because yeah. I do many other things. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very much into music as I started the record company, Ring of Bell Records. I do music. I write music. And, um, you know, these are things that if I had the time and I could delegate someone to manage my portfolio as far as property managers and things like that and, you know, the mailbox money, collecting checks and things of that nature, as an entrepreneur, I would have multiple sources and multiple things that I do, but I really like to do things that I love. So I'm into music and I'm into skateboarding and I'm into fitness and boxing and these types of things. Um, you know, I eventually I, I see myself transitioning and like maybe having a clothing line, a skateboarding line. You know, I'm just a creator. So these are the things that I would do if I had the funds and I didn't have to focus 100% of my time and efforts on building a business, right? Once the business was built and established, I would rather spend my time on things I'm even more passionate about, which are the music, the skateboarding, the gym, the fitness, the boxing, the coaching, um, and helping others. So I wouldn't just, you know, wash my hands, collect checks, and sit back. That's not me. Uh, I'd be doing more of the things that I'm passionate about. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm not picking on you, man. I'm a good host. I'm not picking on my, I'm not picking I, on I, want, I wanted to clarify <laughs> that, though, because it came yeah. out like it, I was going to. It wasn't. It wasn't directed for you, it's for the audience who's watching because they have this idea sometimes that, you know, real estate investors, as they see the Grand Cardone who travels the world, world and he actually, he doesn't travel, he, he works while he's still traveling and, you know, like, mm -hmm. they, they just have, again, I, I just want to clarify those things because some people have a, you know, false perspective and I came across these people multiple times, so I just want to clarify these things. So I, I know you won't right. be, you know, you won't be sitting lazy on a sofa. I know that, man. So what about, what about the vocal? <laughs> it's not possible. Yeah. What about the record label? I will, I would love to talk that like music wise, uh, ring a bell records, man. That's uh, mm -hmm. like, what do you want to do with that? Like going further? Are you planning to like percentage wise, how much time are you spending on it currently? And, and where, where are you, you know, what are you planning to put it in your life in the future? And where do you even imagine, you know, having this, this music business going? Um, so I am, first of all, I want to make it, um, you know, make it known that I'm a Christian. I'm a man of faith. And I, I've been doing music since I was about 14. Um, so I've, I've made hundreds of songs, um, you know, mixtapes. And it was more secular back then. But over the last two years, um, I just made a serious rededication to Christ, um, giving my life to Christ. So the music that I make is all going to be Christian-based, gospel-based, so to just be a positive message. Gotcha. Um, and it's something different, right? You you hear Christian music, and you kind of have a cliche around it, or it sounds this way, or it doesn't sound secular. I came from a secular background. I came from making secular music, so I'm really good at it. I, at least I think I'm good at it. <laughs> um so I brought that secular style and combined it with the Christian gospel arena. So I bring these two together. So you not only get that sound that you love, that you're used to, and that new sound, if you will, but you also get a great positive message when you listen to it. It's something you can play in front of your grandmother, something you can play in front of the kids, and you don't have to mute it or find a censored version, right? There will never be a parental advisory sticker on any um project that I put out simply because I don't use profanity at all in my music and um, you know still work you know God's still working on me I always be a work in progress but I won't put it out with any of my music and uh, what I do see myself doing in music is it's not just music to me it's a ministry where I can spread my message I can share my story I can share my testimony about how I came from growing up in a small city um, Hayward California uh, living in a trailer park, um, you know, we didn't get our first home till we were seven years old. I mean, I got five other brothers where we drove around in a mobile home and parked in different places, and we lived like that. So I had a very humble beginning. Um, growing up um, as a pastor's son, 
as my dad was an ordained minister for a multitude of years, and, and being the rebel of the family, being, being the, one of the sons that went completely away from church for a long period of time and wanted to be a part of the world. And one thing that I always wanted um, as a young kid was to be wealthy, was to, to actually have money because we never had money. And I, and I figured out how to work. And, and, and I want to tell that story. I want to share that story to encourage and motivate other people that it doesn't matter what background you come from. It doesn't matter, you know, um, if you have only a mom or if you have only a dad, if you have the will to succeed, you have to, you have to almost be desperate to change your situation because disparity creates tenacity. It, it creates an unction that you have to do something in order to change something. So I want to share that passion that I have um, that has helped me in my life. It's, it's taken me from one to 10, you know, without going the traditional route. I went to school, I got a degree, I got a graduate degree, and then I worked a job. And, you know, I, I did it completely untraditionally. And I, was, and I was able to see success in my life. Um, so that's what I want to do is I want to take that on a global scale um, my music will be played around the world. Matter of fact, my music already has been played around the world. Um, I did a song, um, rest in peace to my uncle Jerome Spence, who passed away in 2017. Um, he was a music publisher um, for movies um, and TV. And he also did uh, other projects um, for Peer Music Group. Um, so he actually was a label executive himself. So that's how, you know, I had connections in the industry. And I actually did a song back in 2012 that you can still find on Spotify. It's called Need a Wish by Asher J. Bell or Asher Bell on Spotify. Um, it was on an album that was produced for the UK, which was like USA hip hop. Um, and out of the, I think it was 12 or so songs on that album, I had the number one song of that album. This was back in 2012. So my music has already been played outside of the US. So I already know that what I have and what I can create um, will be accepted and received outside of the U.S. So I'm going to continue to put out quality music with an uplifting and edifying message so that whoever hears the music, not only if they do like the, the type of music that I make, not only will they be able to enjoy the music, but it'll be good for the soul. It'll be good for the mind. Um, and and it'll, it'll actually impart something into you that will – maybe change your train of thought, or if you were depressed, or if you were lost, it, it would help you, you know, start to see that there is a way out of whatever situation that you're in. So I look at music as a ministry. Yeah. I know that's a long-winded answer, but yeah, no, no, that's no, what no. I want to do with my music. I want to share my message around the world. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I never, I never, I never would thought that you would do Christian music because you look like a rock star anyway. But, you know, but that, but that was very awesome, man. That, that is cool. I love that because, again, it, it's just, you know, spreading the positive vibe is always great. Again, but when it comes to the music, because if you turn on, like, radio, I don't know, do people even listen to radio anymore? I mean, everybody's going to SoundClouds and, like, <laughs> but, you, you know, when you switch it on, it's like, it's all, you know, like, it's all negative. You know, like 99 man. So, so what? what could, yeah. And it's a big influence. Like, look at the younger generation, the way they dress, the way they act, because they want to be like those people. And the, the yeah. influence is just wrong, man. It's just wrong. You know, the, the, and then you get these like cocky twelve-year-olds uh, walking like dressed like these people. But it's like, man, come on. You know, that's not the right attitude. To right. Have life, you know, because it, it won't get you far. So, can we just talk a little bit about the mindset? Expanding a little bit from positivity, going to the mindset. Maybe you can. Tell the audience, because again, coming from that position, like no college degree, going through, you know, self-education, uh, you know, learning the skill sets of sales and, you know, real estate and now real estate investing. Can you tell people how is it important to get the right mindset and how to do that in life and business? Absolutely. So um, first, the first thing that you need to do is you need to surround yourself with people that are going to lift you up, people that are going to pour into you and people that can pour into you. So what does that mean? Well, you got you to gotta associate yourself with people that are doing things that 
you want to do or you can see yourself doing. Because what that will do is if that person sees the will in you that you want to be associated, that you're eager to learn, um, you know, that per- you, you, you would have to be bold and courageous enough to ask that person, hey, could you be my mentor or yeah. could I learn from you? Or, you know, you just, you just study them and, and vicariously you build a relationship and next thing you know, you know, they, they are helping you develop and teaching you what they do. But you have to surround yourself with the right people. If you're hanging around people that aren't doing anything but hanging out and, and working a, a nine to five and waiting for the weekend, then nine times out of ten, you're going to be working a nine to five right there with them and waiting, to, waiting for the party or the event that they're going to on the weekend. Mm-hmm. But if you're hanging around people that are possibly ahead of you or doing what you want to do or just people that generally want to do better for themselves, well, you know, birds of a feather flock together. You're going to eventually, it's going to rub off on you. You're going to start to want to do more because Everyone around you is doing more. You're going to be the only one who's, like, not doing anything if you're around people that are out there doing, right? We call them doers. So number one is get yourself in the right circle. And, and you got you to gotta, – and the second step is what's the right circle? How do you find the right circle? Well, this is where you're going to have to do some soul searching. You're going to have to literally sit down and, you know, get some quiet time. Go to the park. Um, maybe, I don't know, if you, if you like to play golf, if you like to hike, um, whatever, if you like to take a jog early in the morning where it's peaceful and it's serene, go find that type of environment and just, you know, sit there and just think for a little bit. You know, what is it that you really want to do? What are some things that you really like to do? What are some hobbies that you have? Do you enjoy talking to people? Do you enjoy, do you like to work with animals? You got to figure it out. What, is, what do you really see yourself doing? You know, and, and focus on a passion, right? Because anything that you're passionate about, anything that you enjoy, it'll be easy for you to do. It won't feel like work. Like for me, um, to, to relate this to a personal experience, I enjoy talking to people. As you can see, I love to communicate. I love to engage. I love to build. I love to share. Um, so this is why sales and real estate come natural to me. I get to deal with people and, and I enjoy doing it. So all in all, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's not work that I don't enjoy, right? I enjoy it, so I excel in it. I keep doing it. So number one, get in the right circle. Number two, you have to find you. The only way you'll find the right circle is finding out what you want to do, and then starting to seek people that are doing that, and that's the circle that you want to associate yourself with. And then number three, which would probably be number one, is you have to believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, then how are you going to get other people to believe in you? How do you, how do you, you have get to that? believe that? You, what's that? Sorry for interrupting, but you know, like, because I know people saying, oh, believe in yourself, believe like, but look, if, if, I'm, if I'm lost, completely lost in life, and I have, again, the, the five, the rule of five people, I have 20 of them. <laughs> they're all nasty they're all bad and everybody's saying you can do stuff and you know it, it's bad it's pretty bad you know and like if it were, like how do you find that belief because again maybe you have not been in a similar situation maybe you know friends that have been in a similar situation which is like completely like the friends are bad everything's bad they they, they hate the job the jobs is bad like they, they have no exit like there is no exit for them how how somebody can find that belief in them that they can actually change the life for them okay well that that's a really really good question and i actually have been in that situation yeah. when when i was at the warehouse i came to that same point where in that warehouse i mean you kind of got there's a certain class of you know of people in that particular warehouse where a lot of younger guys there was a, there was a ton of negativity in there mm-hmm. um you know that's why i would get in and get out quickly um, but I didn't like my situation anymore. So the first thing I had to do was to realize if I want to change my situation, something has to change. And the first thing was in my mind, I said, I can't keep doing the same thing and expect a different result. So if you, if you rewind this podcast, um, I, I, I actually did, I didn't mention it, but I reached out to Richard, which was a buddy of mine. Um, that I knew did something else. 
So I had to seek it out. I had to I had to do something to get out of that situation. So I sought out help. I called on a friend that I knew was doing something different and I and I got myself out of that circumstance because I sought it out. I actually had to do something. I had to look outside of my circum uh, my circumstance at the time and say well, if I want things to change, I have to get out of this environment. So I got myself out of that environment because I was desperate. I was desperate for change. When you're desperate, you you find a way. Yeah. So if you're saying to yourself right now, I don't like the job that I'm at. I don't like the people that I'm around. I'm not happy. I'm feeling depressed. My morale is low. They talk down to my manager. My boss talks down to me. I just can't take it anymore. Well, I want to tell you something that you are in control of your life. Yeah. So if there's something that you don't like about your situation, you have all the ability and capability to change it, but it starts with you making a decision. And not making a decision is a decision. Yeah. So if you, don't, if you make a decision to not do anything, well, you're going to stay in that negative environment which is poisonous, it's cancerous, it's going to eat you alive, and you'll just have to stay there. But if you make a decision and say, well, I want to change this, all you have to do is start to look. You know, it's, it's not hard nowadays to get on Google and, and, you know, talk to a recruiter or go to a staffing agency and just try to find a better job, which will sustain you until you can transition into what you really want to do, kind of like how I did. I got out of the warehouse. And I transitioned into sales, which is not something that I want to see myself doing long term, but it helped me transition into real estate, which is something that I can see myself doing long term. So to give you a practical um, uh, analogy of how I put that into perspective in my own life, is that's exactly what I did. I, I changed my situation by seeking out an opportunity, and I pursued that opportunity, which led me to the next step which was getting me into a, an area uh, around people that helped me grow and then also helped me advance into my career, which is going to be real estate. So you just have to take control. And it's a, not an easy thing to do, especially if you're in a negative environment. But, you know, there's, uh, there's just a saying, right? If, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So if you're desperate, if you're desperate enough to change, you got to take the first step and start to seek out a new opportunity, a new, a new circle, or, or, or disassociate yourself with whatever is holding you back. Yeah. Yeah. So true. So true. I, I love, thank you. Big thank you for, for sharing the story again. You know, it's, it, it's super valuable for people, for people who are watching to hear that because I mean, this is your story. You lived it. You came, you, you passed through that. And I mean, you're a living example of that. And again, for the people who are stuck in that position, like I, I do understand, you know, when people, you know, they complain, but they don't change because change is hard. I mean, to change because, you know, if you if you're if you need to change, you will need to learn new things. You will need to go out of your comfort zone again and you will have to like, oh, my God, like it, it's uncomfortable even thinking about it. So, you, you know, it, it's gonna be, yeah. Right. It's, it's going to be tough, man. It's going to be tough. But first days or first weeks are going to be tough. And then you will get used to it as everything as you did ever in your life before. Yep. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, you just have to go through the pain a little bit, you know, and just uh, suffer. Because life, again, it's, it's written in the Bible. I mean, you have to suffer, you know, you have to suffer through. Look at the Jesus. I mean, he suffered through a, a lot of stuff, man. He, he, right. he, he died like he died for the people. So I think if you would right. have this type of attitude, that would be very good because one of my mentors, he gave me, he was like, look, he gave me this example that I'm telling you. He was like, look, do you believe in God? Yes. Look, Jesus, he died for the people. He didn't ask anything in return. I was like, whoa, man, mm -hmm. that's heavy. You know, because the, the, right. this the approach that people should have, you know, just it, it will make you lighter when you think about it, it's like, whoa, you know, I can do more stuff and, you know, I should be more focused on people and just providing them value instead of being selfish and focusing on myself, which make things harder and heavier when I'm thinking about right. myself. So yeah, it, right. yeah, there's ways. And by your example, it, it's like, it, it's tremendous. So, 
Okay, so again, coming back uh, before we wrap up, I have a few more questions, if you don't mind, um, kind of a, still going to the self-education path. Uh, I know there is a lot of people, uh, you know, sales, real estate, you name it, all the different industries, there's all these people offering mentorships. So let's say for the sales or real estate, uh, you know, if people are looking to get involved in these two different, you know, spaces, should somebody, again, maybe for sales, should they go and get uh, mentorship like from a get go if they're looking to learn and come about selling and pay let's say six figures so I want to say that for someone who's looking to get into sales or looking to get into real estate you should always start with the internet and with YouTube because it's free yep. especially if you don't have any money right speaking to the masses that like hey I want to get started but I don't I don't have the money to to pay for the mentorship. I don't I don't have the the five thousand dollars, the three thousand dollars to join that course or to join, to go to that uh, that boot camp, right? Because those things cost money. Um, and one of the things that I do, like I said, I'm always on YouTube, and they have so many different trainings on sales, um, and then they have so much information on anything, and it's all at your fingertips. We all. You know, almost everyone, I, I would I find it hard to believe that you tell me you don't have access to the internet in <laughs> 2020. <Yeah. laughs> I mean, you could go to an Apple store and get on an iPad, which is access to the internet. So there's really no excuse. Yeah. And they, and they won't, they won't, they won't say anything to you because you can act like you're going to buy it. <laughs> um, and you can go there once a day too, and, you know, but pretty soon you're going to have to buy something. Get a library um, card. Seek out free information. Yeah. Um, one more thing that um, I will mention is I am in the process of uh, becoming an instructor on Udemy, um, U-D-E-M-Y.com, yep. where you can either go on there as a student or you can go on there as an instructor um, and you can learn generally anything. And it's specifically for education yep. um, and you name it from A to Z. They have, um, you know, all types of courses on all different types of subjects. Yeah. Um, and like I said, um, for the listeners out there, I am working on a course right now in general communication because I don't want this to be sales um, based or sales oriented because yeah. I know how important communication is in any walk of life and anything that you do, you're going to have to communicate with people in some way, shape, form or fashion. And this is something that, yeah, I don't, I don't actually have a degree in communication, but I have. 31 years of experience in communication. You, you have the life skills. I mean, I don't care about the degree. If I'm looking to learn something from a sales guy and he would show me the diploma, I would be like, no, man. Like, how many years have you worked in sales? Right. So, yeah, you don't have how to. How many sales have you made? Yeah. So can, can you just tell audience just a quick, like, uh, sneak peeks, like what, what's going to be included in the program just a little bit so, so they will understand more? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, it's going to be called the, uh, well, you know, it's kind of cliche, but it's going to be a communication masterclass. Um, and I actually have it up here. Um, you can't see it from your view, uh, but it's going to be basically, there's going to be five sections of this course. And then I'm going to break it down into three lectures per section. Um, we're going to have an intro. We're going to have an outro. First section will be on listening. And we're going to break that down. We're going to listening to understanding uh, body language and eye contact and how important these things are. And there'll be some statistics and, um, and information um, supporting that, um, supporting what I'm telling you or teaching you on, on that part of the uh, course. Uh, second part will be on understanding. We're going to go into confirmation of understanding, acknowledgement of understanding, and undivided attention and how important these attributes are to communication. And the third section, we're going to go into responses. How do you respond? Asking open-ended questions, articulating your response, and then sharing the space, you know, opening up room for others to talk. Um, and, and, you know, that goes back into listening, right? That's how you have a conversation, you know, goes both ways. Fourth section will be adding and building value. First of all, what is value? Second of all, how to build value. And third, how to add value, because building value is different than adding value. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to go into detail um, on those topics. And then finally, the fifth step and the most important step is going to be a whole section on application. How do we apply this generally? 
Um, how do we apply this in business for those who are business um, who are in business? And then also just a personal application um, where it can be applied into everyday life and your relationship uh, and your everyday interactions. Um, and then I'm going to wrap it all full circle and summarize it and not overwhelm you, you know, w with what they say, uh, a fire hose of information. But I'm going to give you enough information with statistics um, and well-rounded um, facts to justify everything that I'm saying. And I'm actually using this on a day-to-day -day basis. And it's helped me excel from nothing to something. And I know that it can help you as well. So I'm going to take all, um, well, let's just say 12 years of my experience in communication, successful communication, and I'm going to put that into a course for you. Man, that, that, I love that. I, I love that the way you break the break it down because now, now everybody got, has the perspective and like, whoa, it, it's heavy. It's pretty heavy. But it just makes me laugh because, you know, like Asher is just scanning me right now and thinking like Martin is missing all the points that I'm teaching. So, you, you know, <laughs> it, it's, good. it's good. It's definitely super valuable because what I mentioned, like this is just people are too dependent on this instead of like face-to-face -face mm -hmm. interactions like – for the young entrepreneurs or just people, you know, if, if you're a single guy, you want to, you know, you, you want to, you, you don't want to be single anymore, get Asher's, you know, uh, communication course is definitely <laughs> going to help you, you know. So again, before we wrap up, last one question. Again, I know mm -hmm. self-education and personal development is, it's important for you. I clearly see that. So can you just tell people, you know, three business, personal development, real estate books, sales could be anything three books that you would recommend for, for people to read? Yes, absolutely. So um, one of the first books that I want to recommend is by Ray Dalio. It's called Principles. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a great book. It's a long book, but it's full of, of, of very, very valuable information. Um, I've read the book personally, and that's something that you can go back and read over and over again and probably learn something new every time. So Principles by Ray Dalio would be the number one of my first choice or first recommendation. Um, second would be The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Um, that book's going to get you pumped up. That book's going to get you energized. If you're feeling dead or dull in, 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 in your business, in your life in general, that book is going to give you a jolt and a shock, and it's going to help you get going. Um, and I've read that book multiple times as well um, because it always, every time I read it, like, it just gets me pumped up. It gets me ready to go. And the third book is by Andrew Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Um, that, that book is just, it's, it's just it, it was written a long time ago. But that just shows how valuable it is because it, it goes into, you know, being influential and how, um, how he was such a great conversationalist and, and he was one of the best conversationalists. And he breaks it down kind of like how I do in my course. What did he do that made him such a great conversationalist? Yep. And these things that I've outlined in the course that I'm creating are things that have made me what I feel a great conversationalist. So first book would be Principles by Ray Dalio. Second book is going to be The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. And third book uh, by Andrew Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Awesome. Awesome. They, those are great books. The, I, I wrote, I read these. Oh, I didn't read the 10X yet, but it, it's definitely on the list. Awesome. I love it. I love it, man. It just, you know, pleasure. I don't know, like I'm just overwhelmed with all the information that you just gave me, you know, sales, real estate, communication. I mean, you, you do it all, man. You do, and you do everything successfully. I mean, having all the diplomas, you know, to prove it. And it's just awesome. You provide so much great energy, you know, and uh, people can sense that even though they're watching this through YouTube or maybe you're listening this on a podcast. I mean, you can sense where it's, when somebody has a good energy and you definitely have it. You know, so I really appreciate the time and the effort today, you know, putting all this content here. Whoa, he came back. That's awesome. So, you know, I appreciate you, man, just, just providing this great, valuable content today here for the people, you know, and I, I know like people feel exactly the same. Like if somebody has more in-depth questions, maybe about the course or, you know, real estate or sales, what will be the social media platforms for them to reach you? Um, absolutely. So um, 
I, I will actually make sure I send them to you. So when you actually do publish and post the video, um, you can include them probably in a caption or at the, at the back of the video. But um, and you can find me on Instagram. Um, if you just type in Asher J. Bell, kind of across all platforms, YouTube, Asher J. Bell, LinkedIn, Asher J. Bell, and the same Facebook, Asher J. Bell. You'll be able to find me across all social media platforms. Um, I am avidly on social media, and I post a lot of content. I post a lot of videos. I do a lot of motivational speaking on my YouTube. I've got over 50 videos on my YouTube channel, um, which I am currently growing. So you can find me across all platforms by my name, but I also share the direct link um, to make it easier to find me on social media. Love it. Love it. So again, guys, as you always know, Smart people, find everything down below. All the links are going to be there. Go in contact with Asher, ask him questions, sales, real estate, you know, music. I mean, this, this man is diversified all across different platforms. And again, just not even diversified, but crushing all these different, you know, uh, different businesses and aspects. So, man, it's just a true pleasure and honor to have you today on the show. You know, you provided a ton of value, man. So, you, you know. Super excited to have you on, and hopefully we can do something like that, you know, in the near future as well. And, and Martin, I definitely want to thank you for giving me the opportunity um, to be a part of, of the great work that you're doing. Um, I'm also honored that you would even think of me as someone of value to give value on a podcast. So I want to thank all the listeners for, if you're still here listening to the entire um, show, and, um, you know, continue to plug in with Martin. I, I was looking at his YouTube channel the other night, and I saw some of the interviews that he's doing, and I was blown away. I mean, if you're looking for uh, content that is going to just kind of shake you up, and you're just going to be getting information from very successful people, um, subscribe to Martin's YouTube channel and continue to follow him on his journey as he's crushing it in his industry as well on helping you become better at multiple topics and multiple walks of life. My God, that, that's, a, that's the way it's supposed to be doing my endings. <laughs> Maybe I'm just going to cut this piece and use it every time before I finish the, the interview. I'm, not, I'm bad at it. I'm bad at it. So I th I'm, I'm glad you finished <laughs> off that way. So, guys, you know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like if you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'm going to see you on the next episode. Thanks.